Wow. Today we're going to demonstrate the UPK2 and maybe have a little too much fun. Всем привет! Данное видео это небольшое вступление к видеообзору, который сделал для нас Tao Flender Mouse. Джефф, привет! В его видеообзоре речь пойдет о нескольких пулях отечественного производства. Это универсальная пуля Контрива или УПК-2. The UPK-2 is a relatively new slug from Russia, and it's called a universal bullet because it can be shot through both smoothbore and through rifling. Now, the person that sent these to me wanted to remain kind of anonymous. We'll just call him Aceton for now. And that's because the creator of these slugs did not want these sent to the United States for testing. I received both a 30 gram and also a 34 gram version of these. Today we'll be shooting the 30 gram version. And as you can see, the quality of these things is just impeccable. Uh, the, the casting and everything is just beautiful. Uh, it's a three piece slug consisting of a lead nose, the tail assembly, and also the power piston. Now one of the challenges I have to face is trying to match the uh, velocities that uh, they use in Russia with their powders with what powders we have available in the United States. I decided to use a powder called E3. I used 23 grains of this powder. And according to my charts, this should achieve a velocity of about 1,475 feet per second, or about 450 meters per second, which is very close to uh, the velocities that they're getting good results with in Russia. But as you can see, it's very easy to load one of these slugs, just put the prescribed amount of powder in there, uh, stuff the slug in there, tamp it down, and then put a roll bead on it. All right, straight out of the streets of Moscow, we have a Russian slug here called the uh, UPK or UKP or? UPK2. Nice little, uh, nice little design there. It's clean. Yeah. Very, it's a world-class slug, man. So what we're gonna try and do is uh, hit the 25 yard block out there. And if the 25 yard block doesn't work, or if it'll work at the 25, we'll try it again at 50 and see what we can do with some uh, sniper skay uh, from the shotgun. Okay, 25 yards, smooth bore, hit it. No problem. The first shot's always kind of revealing about where the rest of the shots will go. Greg will make an adjustment to his red dot and get that shot a little tighter than that. But as you can see, without spin stabilization, very stable slug and uh, it's looking good so far. Wow. Wow. That's a good shot, man. So 50 yards, I was aiming for dead center of that triangle and that thing is maybe <laughs> an inch off. That's crazy. That's nice. So far this slug is looking absolutely uh, amazing as far as accuracy goes. Greg made a simple adjustment to his red dot and he's on the target now. So let's see how these perform through a rifled choke now. Yep, rifled choke, headshot, hit it. <laughs> hit it. So right in his nasty little demon forehead, exit wound. <laughs> and look, took some of his little styrofoam brain matter plugged it into that hole. Still hit the orange square. Now using spin stabilization uh, didn't seem to affect the ballistics any. It's just as accurate with or without it, it seems. Okay, I'm ready. So uh, <laughs> we gave him the old pink canoe right down the top of his scalp there, <laughs> Taliban style, and plugged that, uh, he was sitting right here. Plug that thing right into the block. That's pretty close. Now you may have noticed that in some of the shots the gas piston falls off the slug as it's flying through the air. Other times it, the gas piston stays attached to the slug. However, we can't really tell if that has any effect on the accuracy or not. Of course, you always have to consider things like the human factor, uh, the fact that Greg is using an unmagnified red dot scope, but all in all, so far this slug is looking very, very impressive through both rifled and through unrifled applications. Okay, body shot you say? Sure, I'll go right on the logo. Okay, hit it. Hit it. So another one that's good we called 
Shot for the logo, impacted there, but exited in his shoulder. Look at that. Wow. It took a little turn for the that water sensor. Pretty good shot. Now, a rifle choke, or what they call a paradox in Russia, is just a, a little extension on the end of the barrel with a few inches of rifling in it, and just that alone will give a projectile a little bit of a spin. Now, some shotgun slugs work well with a rifle choke, others just completely fail with a rifle choke. <laughs> is that cast iron? I don't know. It says steel. San Jose steel. World's biggest trailer hitch. <laughs> it is about uh, a little bit bigger than a human head. <laughs> it is. In real life, so we'll see uh, <coughs> what we can it's do. It's thick as hell. Okay, world's biggest trailer hitch. Hit it! Oh, you hear that? Ding! Yeah. Very, very slight indentation right there. On well, the it's not solid, it's hollow, but it's pretty thick. Yeah. But it is heavy too. World's biggest trailer hitch. I'd like to see the truck that came off of. <laughs> yeah, or the jet ski that it tows. Yeah. <laughs> now, I thought this object here was made out of cast aluminum. It turned out to be cast steel, and a magnet will actually stick to it. And even though these slugs use a high percentage of antimonium, making them a very hard lead projectile, it was still no match for this thick steel object. Okay, quarter inch stainless steel plate, anytime. Pretty close. About Look at the, uh, the depth too. Yeah, pretty good. Didn't make it through, but you wouldn't want to be standing behind it. Now this shot, the uh, gas piston separated again. Haven't really seen any correlation why it sometimes falls off and sometimes remains on the slug. But again, it doesn't really seem to affect its ballistic characteristics in any way. Okay, Flader Mousers, just for you. Taylor Swift goes scuba diving. She's got a little tank of uh, Barbasol on her back. We're gonna set her on this block and see what she can do. Bloop, bloop. Is that she, Taylor Swift? She's ready for you. T Swizzle, ready okay. to go. <laughs> okay, ready to go. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I don't know. There's just something a little sadistic, but also something a little uh, satisfying about shooting a uh, action figure like this. And if you know who this action figure actually is, let me know in the comment section because it's not Taylor Swift. All right, so uh, much more interesting to see Taylor Swift get bukkake than the Romulan Cylon, but uh, <laughs> man, she just got blown in half with that. And then you can see her air tank. Turns out she was scuba diving in dangerous waters. <laughs> okay, now we'll take a couple more shots with a smoothbore using the Mossberg 590. Okay, I'm ready. So our little uh, shiny bone hole here landed right next to the laser dot. Burrowed in there. Almost the same depth as that last guy. Yep. And once again, very stable, accurate flight out of a smoothbore shotgun. This time using the Mossberg 590. Okay, I'm ready. Of course, we had no... Uh, through penetration on this because the slug hit right in line with the crankshaft made out of a hard steel. Uh, I don't know if even a 50 cal would go through that crankshaft or not. Okay, Greg is back using the rifle choke again. Ready. All right, center mass. All right, center mass. Found this thing burrowed right into his arm. Huh. And where were you where were you aiming right there? The slug, yeah, tore right through his okay, belly. Okay, I thought those stayed together. That's all kind of weird. Didn't seem to affect the that. Yeah, there you so go. There's the new one. I That's guess a good slug. That makes sense because when we dug this one out of the block, or when we looked down in the block and saw it, this was what we saw. Yeah. So this yep. thing was gone somewhere. Okay. Discards that. It doesn't a, seem to, to matter or affect anything. I just assumed it stayed together and shoved up in there. Now in case you don't really follow my channel. I made this 
gummy bear out of a, I used a VAT-19 gummy bear, made a mold of it, and then cast this bear out of ballistic gel. Now, a lot of people think that a rifle choke doesn't do anything to a slug. It doesn't really impart much of a spin on it, but this, if anything, will convince you that it does put a very substantial spin on a slug. Okay, we'll zoom it in a little bit more, and you can see that slug spinning at a pretty good rate. Now, a lot of people have the idea that adding spin stabilization is gonna make a slug more accurate. Uh, in this test, it really didn't seem to matter at all. It was just as accurate through a rifle choke or through a smooth bore without any spin at all. And of course, we'll leave the best shot for last. Here we have this crazy setup here, and if this doesn't prove how accurate these slugs are, nothing will. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> now this is the end result of when you have a great shooter and a very accurate slug, you get results like this. And that, folks, is how you shoot a can of shaving cream the hard way. Now we have three more types of slugs that uh, Aceton sent us that we'll be shooting in the near future here. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you had as much fun watching it as we did making it. And of course, I want to thank my Patreons. Uh, you guys are very generous, whether it's a dollar or ten dollars or whatever you're donating. It definitely helps uh, us buy powder, gasoline, uh, props, all that stuff. It makes the video a lot more exciting. And thank you for that.